This short film will go over the key points that you need to know about the Crimean War that lasted from 1853 to 1856 and illustrates what 19th century warfare was like. Now in the 19th century, Britain was top nation. We ruled about a fifth of the Earth's surface and about a quarter of the people on the Earth were ruled over directly by Queen Victoria. But in Europe at the time, there are other major powers. And in the 1850s, they were really, really worried about one part of Europe, which was called the Crimea. Now, the Crimea had Russia to the north of it and the Ottoman Empire to the south, or the Turks, as most of Europe knew them. And they were um, having a bit of tension between each other over this area here in the Caucasus. In the 1850s, the Russians were being particularly aggressive in this area. Now, the British and the French were very interested uh, were very keen to uh, secure the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire's favour and allow them to trade with him. So they put lots of troops onto their new steamships and sailed them far away from home through the Mediterranean and up via the Dardanelles until they finally crossed the Black Sea and arrived in the Crimea. Now, the Crimea is a peninsula that... Uh, nowadays is just south of Ukraine, uh, but then was part of the Russian Empire. And the main target for the British troops in the Crimea was the port of Sevastopol. Now, Sevastopol was where the, the Russian Black Sea Fleet um, was held, and so it was a key target. So the British troops landed at a place called Alma, just to the north of Sevastopol. And when the British troops landed and they were handed out their weapons, they were incredibly surprised because they thought they just had the standard issue muskets they were used to. But uh, when they fired them, they realised that they had been issued with some new uh, guns called rifles, which managed to um, shoot the Russians from far away and gave them an advantage. So they won the Battle of Alma, but the generals, they delayed and they didn't march into the city, giving the Russians the opportunity to move their army into Sevastopol and defend it. So the British and the French and the Turks began to besiege Sevastopol um, and built a network of trenches around it and began to bombard it. So you had scenes very similar to those of the First World War on trench warfare. The British uh, set up a uh, port at Balaclava where they would ship all of the weapons and food and armour they need from Britain. And this led to a huge complex uh, of buildings there at the bay. And they connected the bay to the trenches around Sebastopol using a railroad so they could quickly and effectively get troops there. It was at Balaclava Bay that uh, Mary Seacole famously set up the British Hotel which was a place where soldiers could go and be treated and try and be cured from her herbal remedies. And she'd also go onto the front line to try and treat the soldiers there with her herbal remedies. If you were badly injured in the conflict, then you'd be put on a boat from the Crimea and taken back to the Turkish mainland uh, to a place called Scutari. And it was here that Florence Nightingale, upon reading of the terrible conditions there, got together a group of trade nurses, went over, cleaned up the hospital and statistically proved that the cleaner the hospital the less casualties that you have and so Florence Nightingale very famously uh, founded the nursing profession and made sure that hospitals were clean. Another famous character of the Crimean War was the journalist William Russell. He was uh, what was known as the first war correspondent and he would uh, sit in the trenches with the British soldiers, write stories about what was happening and then he would send his stories back via this new invention called Telegraph uh, and these messages would arrive the same day uh, back in London to be able to be printed by the Times. In fact, it was said that the Russian Tsar found out what was happening in warfare uh, by reading the Times rather than listening to his own generals. But back in Britain, them reading about the plight of the British soldiers made everyone very enthusiastic about the war. Uh, and this led to a great swell of jingoism, this love of war, and loved, led to many women having a campaign to try and knit special woolly hats for the soldiers known as balaclavas. In 1854, the Russians decided to launch a huge campaign to push the British back, and the British army came out to meet them on the plains above the 
Port of Balaclava. And this big battle became known as the Battle of Balaclava, one of the few set-piece battles uh, of the war. The British forces were led by a chap called Lord Raglan, who fought at the Battle of Waterloo and hadn't really progressed much in his military thinking. So this means that during the battle, you had lots of uh, images which were very similar to the Battle of Waterloo, big infantry movements, big cavalry movements. But when these came up against new weapons like the Russian cannons, uh, when the Light Brigade, for example, charged at the Russian cannons, they, the whole unit was completely decimated. And it shows how outmoded tactics were being used to try and combat new technology, which invariably led to disaster. In the end, the uh, Russians decided to, do, to sign a treaty with the Turks and the British and the French just to get them off their territory, really. And they made some concessions to the Turks and the Caucasus and some concessions to the Turks and the Balkans as well. And the Crimean War was over.